So is everyone here? You ready, Kalika? All right. So what we're gonna do and what I wanna talk to you today about is underglaze. In the cabinet behind us, I keep all the bottles of underglaze. The underglaze is gonna come in tall bottles like this, which if you're looking for the color, I will be writing it in Sharpie or Coleco will be. But if it's not, it's right on the side in three different languages. So you can look for the color that way. Also, I have underglaze in this Amico brand and I have bottles like this. This is underglaze as well. So there's three type of bottles that you need to look for. The one thing though, there is wax resist in there. Please read the bottles. Make sure you're not using wax resist on your pottery right now, okay? Uh, using underglaze, we can use it when your pottery is leather hard. We don't wanna use underglaze when your pottery is green, right out of the bag, wet, okay? Leather hard, the better. This piece here is leather hard. It's still a little bit tacky. Tacky meaning I can still feel the moisture and it's a little sticky. If I want to dry this some more, I can use my hair dryers. I have a hair dryer in the back of the room and I have a hair dryer on both sides. You can hair dry your clay and you're drying that surface so you'd be able to underglaze it, okay? Um, you can underglaze bone dry clay, the third stage of clay, but it's like chalk and you're wetting, you're putting a wet material on a dry dirt you know, pot. So if you've got little pieces, like my little bird added to a piece, and I start underglazing it while it's really bone dry, I'm probably gonna loose, soften that clay again, and that piece could fall off. And I can't I could reattach it when it's bone dry. So it's something to keep in mind. Leather hard is when I'd like you to do your underglazing. Not bist either. Um, so yesterday in class, I started underglazing this piece and my clay was a little too tacky, a little too wet. And you can kind of see there that I can see my clay body through the black underglaze. So I stopped. I'm gonna get my black underglaze. Make sure when you get your underglaze, see the lid's on and you have your finger over the top of the lid because every semester somebody will just grab it and go like this and the lid will fly off and it will get all over Kalika or whomever's next to you. And it's a, a huge mess. So make sure you shake it and the lid is on. With these underglazes here, when they're really full, you can just dip your brush in here. If they are real down to the bottom, I have pallets by my sink, those round circular pallets that you can pour some in. One thing I'm gonna be really a stickler about is if you have excess underglaze on your pallets, I don't want you wasting even a teaspoon of it. These bottles are expensive, very expensive, and I want to be thrifty with our materials. So scoop it with your brush out of your palette. If it's even a small little container like this, I want you to do the same thing. Scoop it and put it back in the bottle. Because we want to, you know, we use our materials as wisely as we can. So I've shaken my black and I want to put two to three even coats of underglaze on my pot. So with my brush, I'm going to start just spreading it on. It goes on nice and smooth. I'm going to move to another place. And I'm going to keep going around. I don't want to glunk it on. I don't want to get a bunch like this and just plop it on like that. That's too much and it'll just flake off in the bisque fire. So I need to spread that around. I'm going to go ahead and underglaze the bottom of my pinch pot because I'm going to scraffito my initials in the bottom. Scraffito is what we're going to talk about next. Onto my piece. So I'm just going to set that aside because it's real wet. See how shiny it is? It should dry relatively fast. If it doesn't, take it over to the hair dryer and just dry it with the hair dryer, right? This piece here, I started my technique of scraffito on. Scraffito is a really beautiful design that you can draw into your clay. You need to use a dark colored underglaze, black, burgundy, red, dark blue, any dark color works best with Scraffito. This is an example of Scraffito where I've drawn all these designs in the side of my pinch pot. It only can be done on leather hard clay, the technique of Scraffito. And I have this term on my white erase board for you with a bunch of other stuff I've already gone over. 
So I still have my leather hard pinch pot and what I started to do is draw into the clay surface, exposing the white of the clay underneath my, my underglaze, my black underglaze. And let me, I forgot my tools. Let me grab those real quick. <laughs> All right, so the tools that you're going to need for scraffitoing, you can use an X-Acto blade. This is actually the scraffito tool. It's not a needle tool. It's got little tiny ball bearings on the end, and this one actually the ball bearings broken off. So I wouldn't try to scraffito with that, but I can scraffito with these little ball bearings, or I can scraffito with my needle tool. So make sure your hands are not real dusty and dirty. I'd wash them before I scraffito. And then all I'm gonna start doing is drawing my design into my clay like that. Have a dry paintbrush next to you that you can brush these little crumbs off instead of using your finger like I was just doing because you'll get it real dusty. And a lot of students will ask, will it have this kind of film over it when it's fired? No, it won't, because we will be clear glazing it, so it'll be shiny like this. This is draw just the part where I want to draw and get my designs in. But you see how easy my tool is sliding through my clay. I can take my X-Acto blade and I can make really fine lines. For the veins of my flower and I can continue all the way around doing this in my bowl. I'm going to leave the inside of my bowl white. I could underglaze the inside if I wanted to or you guys can interglaze your inside of your bowls. You can scraffito on the inside like I did in this little guy, put a little flower on the inside. Uh, anything goes with scraffito as long as your clay is leather hard. You can use a stencil. If you're not comfortable with your hand drawing skills, you can get a little stencil, hold it up against your clay body and trace it on with pencil. Pencil will burn off in the kiln. And then you can take your tool and draw it out. I want you to do scraffito on one of your pinch pots. So if you have one, that's why I had you put one in a bag. A lot of people, their clay is still real wet. From being in the bag, put it in front of a fan today while you're building other pinch pots. We want to build four or five pinch pots to get proficient at this. You want to turn in your best example. Any questions? Okay. All right, let's get to work. Thank you, Felicia.